Hello friend, want to use guns as a ranger in Terraria, but not sure what to do? Well, look no further. This video will cover the general progression for gunners or gunslingers in Terraria 1.4. I'll be going through which guns to get at each stage of the game, and some general tips on beating bosses and such. But just keep in mind that you can play the game however you want, and this is just a rough guide and recommendation. I'm Zuzu Korn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home, so subscribe now and join the Zuzu Korn family. Let's begin. As you spawn into the wonderful world of Terraria, you realize that you have no guns, so the first thing we want to do is get one. Start off by cutting down some trees and building some NPC houses. You'll need a couple, because we eventually want the arms dealer to move in. If you're in expert mode, I recommend making wood armor, since the extra defense helps a little with the hard-hitting enemies. As for early game weapon choices before your first gun, I wouldn't stress over it too much, and just use a wooden bow or wooden sword. If you really want to, you can go look for a blowpipe which uses seeds as ammunition. This is a pretty decent starting weapon that's classified as a gun, on the wiki at least. With a blowpipe in your inventory, you'll be able to find seeds when you break natural vegetation on the ground so you have unlimited free ammo. But I honestly recommend getting a real gun right away, since it's not that tough to get one anyway. The first goal here would be to explore the world and go spelunking. The main objective is to find bombs. Luckily for us, bombs are pretty common as loot from chests, and can also be found by breaking pots that randomly spawn. You really only need one bomb, which allows the demolitionist to move in. You can then buy more from him if you want, with maybe 15 bombs or so, venture into your world evil, the corruption, or the crimson. In all honesty, whatever wooden weapons you have probably aren't going to help that much here. A bow and arrow is definitely better than a sword, but if you're not careful, you're still going to die. A couple of times actually. You can opt to use some hardcore strats, like boxing yourself in, but I honestly just YOLO and dive right in. A grappling hook will help lots for the corruption, so do consider making one out of gems. Now that we have infiltrated the biome, look for Crimson Hearts and Shadow Orbs. They are quite abundant and glow in the dark, so finding some won't be a problem. Use bombs to make your way to them, then destroy them for your first gun. I recommend crafting sticky bombs by adding gel, since it makes it easier to control where you want to explode. Lucky for you gunners, the first orb or heart you break will always give you a gun. So pick up your Musket for Corruption Friends, and the Undertaker for Crimson Pals. It comes with 100 Musket Balls as ammo too. These guns are a great starting weapon, and the benefits of guns in general compared to bows is that bullets fly in a straight line. This helps you snipe enemies from afar, unlike bows, which are greatly affected by gravity. With your first gun in your inventory, the arms dealer should move in after you have valid housing, and he sells more Musket Balls for you. They are a little pricey early on, but the 100 that came with the gun isn't going to last you very long. Unfortunately for us, there aren't many gun choices this early. The next upgrade would be the Mini Shark, sold by the arms dealer, but at a base cost of 35 gold, it's difficult to get really early. You can consider spending 5 gold on the flintlock pistol to tide you over, but I honestly think that the musket is good enough. While you're saving up money, explore the world and make better armor. We have to start going against bosses real soon, so upgrades will help. Also, get your health up to 400 using life crystals. Once you've done enough preparation, the nurse probably would have moved in by now. A good tip for cheaper prices is to put the arms dealer in a house in a desert, along with the nurse as a roommate. They are pretty kinky with each other, so to thank you for hooking them up, the arms dealer will reduce prices just for you. At the same time, you can also prepare some bullet upgrades. During Blood Moons, the arms dealer will sell silver or tungsten bullets, depending on your world. Alternatively, you can simply craft them yourself using the respective bar at an anvil. They are not huge upgrades over the musket balls, but the extra damage will help a little. Do consider getting some potion infrastructure set up as well, if you want to. Here's a simplified guide if you need one. At any time that you think you're ready, take down the Eye of Cthulhu. Expert mode eye is way easier if you have a pair of Hermes boots and potions. After that, you need to try to take down the Eater of Waltz or the Brain of Cthulhu. 
This is pretty difficult considering how we don't have piercing bullets, but a mini shark should help tremendously here. Once you've defeated the Easel of Worlds or the Brain, we now have access to the Meteor. Once you beat the boss, a Meteor will fall after a while. You will need a silver pickaxe or better to mine it, but just be careful since touching it burns you. Using bombs won't work anymore in 1.4, until hard mode at least, so keep that in mind. Mine up your Meteor and smelt some bars. Combine the bars with musket balls to make Meteor Shot Bullets, your first real ammo upgrade. These are great bullets that pierce two enemies or bounces once on surfaces. With this, do your best to take down Skeletron for dungeon access, but just remember that the Mini Shark fires rapidly with weak bullet damage, so aiming for the hit right away isn't a good idea. Try taking down the arms first, which will reduce his defense, which makes the Mini Shark more effective. In the dungeon, look for a handgun in locked gold chests. Once you've gotten one, venture down into the underworld to grab Fire Blossom for the Obsidian Skin Potion. Then drink the potion and dive into lava for Hellstone using a Nightmare or Deathbringer pickaxe. Make sure you grab a Hellforge as well, which allows you to smelt Hellstone bars. Combine the bars with your handgun and you have the Phoenix Blaster, a high damage gun at this point. This is a great gun to help you transition into hard mode. Alternatively, you can go for the Quad Barrel Shotgun. This can be obtained after defeating Skeletron as well, so there's really no way around defeating him. The Arms Dealer sells this gun in Graveyard Biomes, which basically just requires you to place down a couple of gravestones from your misadventures. The Quad Barrel Shotgun is really inaccurate, but shoots 4 bullets as the name suggests on consoles right now. But eventually, it will be changed to 6 bullets at once, which is what PC has right now. It's strange that the Quad Barrel Shotgun isn't really quad anymore, but hey, more bullets are always welcome. This gun is a devastating weapon if you shoot it point blank, and combined with the Meteor Shot bullets, it's probably the best gun to take down the Wall of Flesh, since the slight piercing and multiple bullet shots can help you deal with the hungries. This is my preferred gun to bring into hard mode, but like I said, just use whatever you like. At any point in time after breaking Shadow Orbs, clear out the Goblin Invasion and unlock the Goblin Tinkerer. The Tinkerer's Workshop and the Reforging mechanic will help you out lots in the Wall of Flesh fight. Make your nice long Wall of Flesh arena and throw the Guide Voodoo doll into lava. Do your best to take down the wall. I think Ranger or Mage has the easiest time with this boss, so it shouldn't take you too long. Once you've beaten it, welcome to hard mode. Things get a lot crazier and the guns get so much better now. If you're lucky, you get a Ranger Emblem, which boosts your damage by 15%. You could also get the Clockwork Assault Rifle, which is a great early hard mode weapon, but if you don't, it's fine. The first gun I really recommend to get is the Onyx Blaster. The Onyx Blaster is one of my favourite guns and can last you well into hard mode. To make this, you will first need a Mithril or Oricalcum Anvil, so venture into the Corruption or Crimson and use the hammer dropped by the wall to break some altars. Once you've done that, get to work and mine up tier 1 hard mode ore then make the pickaxe. Then mine up tier 2 ore, which are the ones we need. Spelunka potions are great here. You should also just mine up some tier 3 ore while you're at it, since we'll need some of it to upgrade the Hellforge later on. As for armor, I personally satisfy with whatever tier 1 armor I can get my hands on, because we transit into hollowed armor pretty quickly. You could go for the frost armor if you really want, but I don't see a need for that. Head over to the Corrupted Desert, then farm two Dark Shards from Dark Mummies. Then, venture into the Cavern layer of the Underground Corruption and obtain 10 Souls of Night. Lastly, buy a Shotgun from the Arms Dealer and combine them all into the Onyx Blaster. This is an amazingly satisfying shotgun, which shoots a blast of Onyx energy, which deals lots of damage in a small radius. Perfect for dealing with most hard mode enemies. If you can, try looking for the wizard NPC too, and buy a crystal ball from him. Then combine 4 stacks of musket balls into the endless musket pouch, which gives you unlimited basic ammo. That's right, once you've invested these 4 stacks, you can now use guns forever. Just keep in mind that the musket pouch is only for basic ammo, so if you want better bullets, you still need to make them. But as a general convenience, the endless musket pouch is great. If you see a travelling merchant who sells the ammo box, make sure you pick that up, place it down, then right-click it for an ammo conservation buff. 
Not that it matters for the endless musket pouch, but having ammo conservation is great when you're using more expensive bullets down the line. Speaking of bullets, there are a few great upgrades we have access to now. Firstly, crystal bullets can be made from crystal shards in the underground hollow. These shatter on impact, dealing extra damage. These are one of my favourites. We also have Icor bullets for crimson peeps, and curse bullets for corruption friends. Icor reduces armour, while curse bullets apply the curse flame debuff. They are both really good because of their high base damage, so try them out. Make sure to get a pair of wings if you can as well, they help tremendously against the hard mode bosses. If you need a wing guide, there's a nice summarized video for you. Other great guns include the Dart Rifle and Dart Pistol, which are obtained from the Corruption and Crimson Mimic respectively. You can summon these using Keys of Night in an empty chest, and if you use Crystal Darts with these, they absolutely destroy everything in its path. Once you're ready, take down the mechanical bosses, build an arena if you need to. I recommend this video if you need help. I recommend doing the destroyer first, because it's generally the easiest and simplest. Using the onyx blaster with crystal bullets or the dart guns with crystal darts ought to kill it pretty quickly. The reason why we want the destroyer first is because it drops souls of might, which I used to craft the mega shark, another great gun. As you can tell, you're really spoilt for choice here. The mega shark can be crafted using the souls, a mini shark, illegal gun parts sold at night from the arms dealer, and shark fins, which are dropped from sharks in the ocean biome. And it works really well with special bullets because of its high rate of fire. Once you've taken the mechanical bosses down, at this point in time, or after you've defeated one mechanical boss, you can make a full set of hollow armor. Just make sure you choose the ranger helmet. Grab a wing upgrade if you can, and feel free to craft high velocity bullets using cogs. What's better is mining chlorophyte using the pickaxe axe or a drax, and then using that to make chlorophyte bullets. You will need an adamantite or titanium forge to smelt it though, which was why mining those earlier would make it so much easier now. Anyway, chlorophyte bullets home in on the enemy, and when paired with the mega shark, it turns terraria into easy mode. All you need to do is hold down the fire button, then focus on dodging. I recommend just heading for Plantera right away once you're done with upgrades. Just blow up a huge area and then break the bulb. You can use any combination of whatever gun or bullet you like. As a ranger, lots of combinations are feasible. Just note that chlorophyte bullets are really expensive, so you really want to be using ammo conservation effects. Once Plantera is defeated, I recommend getting the chain gun from Santa NK1s from the Frost Moon. The event is pretty tough, but the chain gun is well worth it. It has a higher fire rate than the Mega Shark, but has poorer accuracy. However, coupled with chlorophyte bullets, this weakness is completely negated. You also now have access to venom bullets, which are made with venom files from the Witch Doctor, and also nano bullets made with nanite from the Cyborg. The venom bullet is the highest damaging bullet we have now, while the nano bullet bounces and may cause the confusion effect. Both are worth trying out, and just use them if you like. At this point, I really recommend getting Shroomite armor, which is a combination of chlorophyte bars and glowing mushrooms. You need an auto hammer for this, which is sold by the truffle NPC, who in turn only shows up if you have a house at a surface level mushroom biome. You need tons of glowing mushrooms here, so I hope you've been saving them. Shroomite armor gives you huge boosts to your ranged damage, but just make sure you pick the helmet for guns. With this, you're practically ready for the end game, and everything becomes really straightforward here. Just breeze through Golem in the jungle temple and take down the lunatic cultist. Get a UFO mount if you like, or the fishron wings, those will help a lot. Then tackle the vortex pillar. This is a gauntlet style event, so once you've defeated a certain number of enemies, the shield falls and you can destroy the pillar itself. Make sure to claim your vortex fragment. Make the Vortex Beater at the Ancient Manipulator. Now, you're ready for the Moon Lord. I recommend making a long road of asphalt and then using Fishron Wings. Once you've built your long road across the world, take down the other three pillars. Once you do, the Moon Lord arrives in one minute. Buff up, use your ammo box, and do your best against the Moon Lord. You can craft some super healing potions using one of each fragment as well. 
I honestly like using Icor or Curse Bullets or Venom Bullets just for the pure damage. You could use Chlorophyte, but I prefer having control of where to aim. This makes a huge difference when you're trying to take out all three eyes at once. Also, remember to fly over the Moon Lord whenever you see the charging particles of the middle eye. Wings with great ascent speed, like the Fishron or the Empress Wings, makes a huge difference. Once you've gotten all three eyes out, keep some distance and shoot the core. If you go too far, the Moon Lord will teleport to you. But luckily, there's a sweet spot where almost nothing can hit you, so once you've found that, you'll be done and safe. Eventually, the Moon Lord will fall and you have saved the world. There's a nice new gun you can get as loot from the Moon Lord, and even some insanely overpowered and broken bullets to be crafted, but that's for you to find out. Congratulations for completing your Terraria journey as a gunner or gunslinger. So many more things await you. If you want to give a shot at using a different class, feel free to check out my videos. I've got one for most vanilla classes out there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria guides and other stuff. Follow me on social media for IRL stuff, and join the Discord server if you want to reach out to me and say hi. This has been Zuzu Corin. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!